All right, hopefully you can hear me. I seem to have lost the tripod to my, my microphone. It seems to have disappeared along with my dignity. So I've been a fan of 3GS for quite some time. In fact, my company website is built in 3JS. Recently, I've been getting more into it and trying to understand a, a lot more about what 3JS is and what kind of makes it tick. In order to reaffirm my knowledge, I thought I would begin to build a 3GS website inside of Webflow. Although we'll be building this outside of Webflow, there are certain workflows and things like that that are specific to Webflow. So we're going to dive in and I'm going to start putting together a 3GS website inside of Webflow. I would suggest using Code Sandbox, and that's mainly because you can actually access the entire raw HTML file. So if you haven't got a Code Sandbox account, you can sign up, it's free. And we're just starting with a basic kind of template. With 3JS, there is going to be a base set of code that you're going to use for absolutely every single project, okay? It's going to be basically setting up the scene, the camera, and the renderer, I think. And then, of course, like lighting and obviously the objects that you're in it. And that's what we're going to cover today is just getting a basic uh, scene kind of loading inside of Webflow and that you kind of got a bit of a workflow where you can build it uh, in Code Sandbox and kind of transfer the code over. So probably we're just going to do something very, very basic right now, but um, hopefully get you set up and using 3JS. If you want to see more of this sort of stuff, let me know because I'll I'll kind of teach as I, as I sort of re refresh my knowledge on 3JS and I can kind of bring you along for the ride a little bit with me. So do let me know if you want to see more 3GS tutorials. But of course, this is gonna be more than enough for enough, uh, some people just to get it up and running. And then of course, 3JS is their oyster then. I'm just gonna to refer to the 3JS uh, docs here. So if I jump into 3JS docs, let's get it loading in a way that we know it's gonna load inside of Webflow and what we're going to do we're going to use this install CDM or static hosting because, because of course we can't store JavaScript files on our Webflow server yet so let's use a the CDN hosting version of um, of 3JS so the first thing we're going to do is copy this and what this is it's basically a it's a polyfill that enables us to do all this fruity stuff here like the type module import map and various things like that it's nothing to do with 3JS it's simply to enable older browsers to use this kind of newer technology which maybe by the time you're watching it we won't need to import that and for that I would just suggest just diving into the installation on 3JS.org and just seeing what they suggest basically but at this point as of the 9th of March 2023 uh, we need to import this polyfill so jumping into code sandbox let's go into the body and let's copy in that uh, that polyfill the next thing we're going to do this is basically what libraries we want to load into our JavaScript and what kind of what uh, do we want to pipe the, the the sort of name of that to and that'll make sense in just a second so let's just copy it return enter that um, so basically what we're saying we're going to load this library here and you'll see we need to actually specify the version we're going to load this library here and we're going to pipe it into the ver sort of the the, the name or library file of three, right? And we're gonna use that in a second, but let's sort this, let's sort this version out here. Um, the easiest way to do that is probably to go to, or to understand what the latest version is, probably go to 3JS MPM. Here we go. So on the MPM page here, you've got the 0 0.149.0. So if we copy that, place it in the version here and save that, and then the final thing we're going to want to do is actually load in 3JS. So let's just copy this piece of code here on that. And script of type module, this means it's going to use the new uh, module definition system. I actually don't know a lot about that, but ultimately you look more familiar with some of the code that you would write when you're bundling all this JavaScript together. So you'll see I'm importing star as three. So I'm basically importing everything as this kind of capitalized three variable from a library called three and that will match the imports here so if i save that and actually look into our page here 
network, refresh that. We should see 3JS loading in, which is exactly what we want. That's kind of the, the raw setup. We're gonna go a lot further and create the scene right now, but this, if we were to copy and paste this into an embed element, let's just do that actually. Let's copy and paste this into an embed element on our Webflow website. Just as a point before we just do this, the general idea behind a 3JS website is, it, I think of it kind of like an illusion. What you'll see, if you go into Jupyter in the Draft's website, jupyterinthedraft.com, you'll see I have kind of a, a background there that the logo kind of rotates towards the mouse and kind of does this filtering thing um, as, you, as you move the mouse, to, mouse towards the edges. It's a fixed canvas in the back. And although the design stipulates that everything is just on the, the sort of page there, other websites where you scroll down and you can see things happening and 3D models moving and whatever interacting. What that is, is a fixed canvas behind it, a fixed element behind uh, a normal HTML page. So you build your HTML page as normal and you place a canvas behind it, which, you'll, which we'll go into now. And then as you scroll down that page, you're moving a camera and you're, you're, you're triggering elements and things like that to the scroll position of the uh, the page and so it looks like you're scrolling through a, a sort of long 3JS scene or something like that but it is, it's an illusion you're just fixing a canvas element and playing through and doing all sorts of nonsense which you may or may not get to in the future but that just just to kind of clear up what inevitably is a 3GS website, right? So let's dive into here and let's create a, an embed element and just paste paste that code that we've gone and done. And if I save and close that, publish this, and go visit this page. In our network, refresh that, you'll see that we were bringing in 3JS. So we've done the groundwork here, and now we're kind of ready to build out our scene. So we're importing 3JS and we're instantiating a new scene, right? This is this, the scene is kind of where everything lives and where you're going to be kind of importing uh, cameras and lights and various things like that. So what we first need to do is actually create an element to almost bind this uh, this stuff into. So once again, if I create a canvas HTML element and give that some sort of ID as WebGL. This is kind of like a common convention here. We just uh, had a yogurt, by the way, and moved the camera a little bit. Grab our canvas element and load, load our scene into it. So equals uh, canvas, canvas equals document dot get WebGL. And then we're gonna create a renderer that's going to render everything inside of this canvas element. Constant renderer equals new 3.webgl renderer. And we're gonna provide it with a canvas. And you can either go canvas canvas or because they're the same, we can just kind of leave it like that. And then we can just clean that up there. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually set the pixel density of our scene. Now, there's no point in rendering unnecessary pixels, so we can do that by setting this, the, the pixel ratio on our renderer. So, renderer set pixel ratio, and we're gonna use a bit of uh, JavaScript, which is gonna choose the lesser of two numbers. So we're gonna do that by going math.min, so the, the lesser of a given set of numbers. So we're gonna provide it a number two, and we're gonna give it the actual density of the device itself. And we can get that by going window.devicepixelRatio. And so this means if your pixel ratio is one, then that is the lesser of two or one, then it's gonna set the pixel ratio to that. If it's 1.5, obviously that's less than two. If it's two, then it's gonna just choose two. If it's six, then two is less than six, so it's gonna choose two in that respect so it's just plain old javascript nothing fancy there uh just making sure that we don't render too many pixels because above two and you're getting into google land there's nothing there's nothing really beneficial of rendering for a pixel density of six or something like that it's all it's all snake oil and then we're going to set the size of the renderer to 
window dot inner width and window dot inner height. And now we need to create a camera for our scene so that we can see everything that's uh, been created in there. So we do const camera and we're going to do a perspective camera, which is kind of like a basic perspective camera. Um, a basic camera and we're going to set the field of view as 75, which seems quite natural. We need to set a, uh, a ratio or, or um, an aspect ratio and we're going to do that by going window dot inner height divided by window dot inner width. And then we're going to go, we're going to set a near and a far value. And you don't have to worry about these too much. This is just to get the scene working. But as you dip into more advanced 3 js you're probably going to care a lot about uh, the near and the far and the, 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 the field of view and various things like that. So we've created our camera. We're just going to move it back a little bit and we'll get into uh, Y a little bit later on. We'll set the Z, which is the X, Y, Z. So we're going to set this to five. And then as with everything we're going to create from this point onwards, we need to add it to the scene. So we simply do that by going scene, add camera. Now with all that being said, we need to bring these together now. Um, let's bring the scene and the camera together now. In fact, it probably makes more sense to do that. And then we're going to go renderer dot render scene camera. Brilliant. That's kind of exactly what we expected. Uh, obviously nothing is in the scene right now, but you're seeing that something is happening right now. So now you should add some stuff to the scene. And this confused me no end when I first started out learning 3JS. There's basically uh, two elements that make up assets within the scene. You've got the geometry itself, and then you've got material that you apply onto the geometry, and then you bind them together using a mesh. You mesh them together, basically. Uh, this would always confuse me for some reason, but just know that we need to create the geometry, we need to create the material, and then we need to bind them together. So let's just do that now uh, by creating a simple square, or a box, rather. So const uh, geometry equals new, three dot box geometry and the box geometry takes three values it's kind of the width and the height and the the depth so we're just going to put one 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 right now so there's our geometry and now we need to create a material so const material equals new three um, mesh basic material. There's a bunch of pre-built materials that you can use, but we're just going to use mesh basic material at the moment. And we want to give it a color of red. And now we want to bind these together using a mesh. So const uh, box equals new three mesh. And then we take the geometry and the material. And then we add that mesh to the scene. So scene add box. Refresh this and voila, we can see it. it's a little bit stretched and I think I know why we got these the wrong way around. Refresh and there you go, there's our box. Wonderful. Now this is not much fun right now because we have a box or a cube in our scene uh, and we're rendering it out and then we're kind of leaving it and the beauty of obviously 3GS is that we can animate things and move things. So the final piece to our puzzle will be to create a what's known as a tick function or an animate function which runs on every refresh cycle of the screen. So I've got 120 hertz monitor here, I'm going to run 120 times a second. Um, and whatever your re refresh rate is on your screen will run that many times and then we're going to update the graphics on each of these uh, ticks or animations or whatever it is you want to call them. So, first of all, we need to create the function that should be called on every render. So let's call this tick a simple function. And the next thing we're going to want to do is just render our scene inside of that function as opposed to just once on, um, on load. And the next thing we're going to want to do is recall this function 
uh, on the next animation tick. So the, we do this with a JavaScript function called request animation frame, and then we're going to provide it a function which, which is itself. So it's a self-looping function. Now, if I save this and, and uh, refresh that, you'll see that nothing is happening right now. And that's because we're not giving, we're not calling this function an initial time. So once you set it off, it's going then, baby. It's going. If I refresh that, you'll see that the cube is back in there. And to really show that we're rendering this scene, we're going to animate this cube by simply going to box.rotation.x plus equals five. Let's just do that. Ooh, that's a, uh, that's a bit fast, isn't it? Let's do 0 0.01, be a bit more sensible. And you'll see our box now is rotating. The f actually, to be fair, the final bit of the puzzle is what you'll see is if we refresh it, resize this, you can see that we're getting some problems here. So we need to now resize this window or our canvas on whenever the window is resized. So we can do that with a plain old JavaScript function window add event listener resize call this function here and we want to resize this renderer so we can do that with camera dot object update projection matrix set size of window dot inner width window dot inner height and then we want to set the aspect ratio of the camera once again to Window dot inner, inner width divided by window dot inner height. So the same thing we saw in our camera up here. We refresh that. We're going to listen out for that, and you'll see that it resizes, and everything is hunky dory. So that is basically our foundational project. There, we've got some geometry, we've got a camera, we've got a scene, we've got an animate function, and we've got a resize function. And this again will be used on every single project, every single FreeJS project you'll ever use, minus obviously the geometry and all the rest of it. We can get into that in a later episode, so make sure you let me know if you want that. So let's get this into Webflow just to show that it's working. I'm gonna copy and paste all that. So we've got our WebGL element, loading all that in, save and close, publish, and there you have it. We have a 3JS scene loading inside of Webflow, and now the world is our oyster. So let me know what you think of this episode by hitting me up with a like. If you're interested in kind of discussing more about this, then do join my Discord. It's a thriving community there where we all chat about anything from FreeJS to general no-code tools that people are bringing to the table. I'll leave a link down in the description. If you want to see more of this stuff, then obviously subscribe. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Boom.